two-way designs. Now things are getting really interesting. We have two independent variables. And the simplest two-way design has two between groups independent variables and a two by two design, which means each independent variable has only two levels. Our first example has to do with false memory, a study by Stephen Frender. Imagine you were standing up in court and you'd uh, sometime in the past witnessed a crime, a robbery, and you had a memory of that. Then there was some misleading questioning and then you had to recall the robbery. Well, there's evidence that the misleading question can distort your memory. You have false memory to some extent. Now, presumably, the extent of false memory depends on how clearly and strongly you can remember the original event. So in this study, we're examining two independent variables that may influence how strongly you lay down that memory. Participants came to this experiment. They were randomly allocated to one of four groups, and they came in the evening and then spent the night in the lab and then in the morning and had the misleading information and then were asked about their memory of the robbery. They were presented pictures, that's the presentation of the robbery, the witnessing of the robbery, either in the evening or in the morning. And overnight they either slept normally or they were kept awake. They had no sleep. So we're interested in the quality of the memory following these manipulations the next morning when you had the misleading questioning and then you had the recall of the event. And our dependent variable is the extent of false memory. In advance of seeing the data, we need to specify, as usual, what our questions are. And for two-way experiments, as with the one-way experiment, our general strategy is to specify in advance some comparisons or contrasts that best match our research questions. And a very typical choice in this sort of experiment, and what we might make here, is to nominate the two main effects and the interaction. Now, a main effect is the overall effect of one independent variable, so the overall effect of evening, morning, averaged over all the other conditions, all the other independent variables. So it is this group averaged together with that group. And in the jargon, A1, B1, average together with A1B2. So that is the A1 level of this independent groups variable A. So that's evening. And then we have a mean also for morning, which is just the average of these two together collapsed over there. And so our main effect for A is A1 versus A2. And similarly, as you've guessed, for independent variable B, it is overall sleep versus no sleep, B1 versus B2. Now, in a two-way design, we have an additional possibility. We can look at the interaction between two variables. And this means we can ask more complex and subtle and interesting research questions. And it's really the main reason often for including two independent variables in a study. We want to know not just the overall effect of evening, morning, or sleep, no sleep, but the way they interact. For example, the effect of having no sleep may be different if you saw the pictures of the robbery in the evening than if you saw them in the morning. So the no sleep minus sleep difference, if there is one, may be different for evening presentation of the robbery than for morning presentation. So we'll be looking at how no sleep minus sleep here might differ from no sleep minus sleep there. In fact, what we do is we take the difference of the differences. We take no sleep minus sleep minus no sleep minus sleep, and that's our single number, our effect size, that measures the size of the interaction. And of course, as usual, we put a confidence interval on that difference of the differences, and that's what we use to help us interpret how big the effect is likely to be and what practical meaning it might have in the research situation. Now let's look at the data. Here we are at the independent groups two by two page, and we have the friend data with the dependent variable false memory score. Four cells here, one for each of the four independent groups, and independent variable A up here, evening, morning, A1, A2, and B1, B2, sleep, no sleep, down here. So this is the A1, B1 group, evening, sleep. The A1, B1 group, evening, sleep, and there's its mean and 95% confidence interval. Let's look at the main effects. 
the evening morning main effect, we click up here and we have the blue group is evening. Average together there, there is the evening mean with its confidence interval. And then the morning group, green, average together there. And there is the morning mean and confidence interval. So morning mean and confidence interval, evening mean and confidence interval. Then the difference between them is the main effect of evening morning, which is the A main effect. And that is about a little more than 0.4. And there it is up there, it's 0.48, and there's the confidence interval on that main effect. So in terms of false memory score, the difference between morning and evening, morning minus evening, is around about 0.5 on this scale, with a confidence interval extending a little beyond zero up to about 1. And if we knew about false memory and this scale, we could interpret what these numbers meant. There's quite a lot of uncertainty there. Let's look at the B main effect. There's a sleep, no sleep. Did you notice those colours change then? There's the evening, morning main effect. There's the sleep, no sleep main effect. And now we're looking at no sleep minus sleep. So that's the no sleep mean here. A little more false memory than for sleep. But in fact, a difference of only around about 0.2. And again, quite a long confidence interval. And there are the numbers up there. But probably our real interest may be in the interaction there. It is the difference of differences. Now, this is a little tricky to follow. There's no extremely easy, good way to represent an interaction. Think of it as difference of differences. So let's say, what's the no sleep minus sleep difference? In the morning, no sleep minus sleep is about from, well, 2.3 down to 1.4. Maybe it's about 0.8 or so. And the no sleep minus sleep difference in the evening, no sleep minus sleep, well, this is going upwards, so it's about minus 0.4 or something like that. So this difference minus that difference, because the interaction is the difference of differences, about 0.8 minus minus 0.4 is about 1.2. Oh, and that's what we've got over there. The difference of differences, this difference minus that difference, is about 1.2, but with a very long confidence interval. The difference there, and here are all the means so you can figure out which is which, is about 1.2, with the confidence interval running from about 0.1 up to about 2.3. If you knew about the false memory score and you thought through the meaning of these various differences, then you may be able to give some useful interpretation of this interaction this difference of differences. Now on this page you're not restricted to just using main effects and interactions. You could use these checkboxes along here to specify any comparison or contrast you like. For example, suppose we're interested in the no sleep minus sleep in the morning. We might take that one minus that one. So this is morning no sleep minus morning sleep, there it is, and the answer is about 0.8, as we considered before. But that is called a simple main effect. It's a main effect because you're comparing the sleep and no sleep on one of the independent variables, but it's simple because it's at a single level of the other independent variable, not averaged across them all. So it's the no sleep sleep effect at morning, 0.8. Then we could say, fine, let's do the same for evening. And so we get that difference. It's the evening no sleep minus the evening sleep. And the answer is about minus 0.4. Often with these two by two designs, you've really got two common choices for how you specify your contrasts in advance. Perhaps the commonest is, as we did, say, let's look at the main effect of A, the overall effect of evening morning and the main effect of B, the overall effect of sleep, no sleep, and then look at the interaction. Another possibility would be to say, look, I'm really interested in the interaction, then I'd like to pull it apart. So first we look at the interaction, and then we look at two simple main effects that are sort of the contributors to that interaction. And so if we looked at the interaction, and then looked at these two simple main effects I've just looked at, no sleep, minus sleep, morning, versus the same for evening, then we'd be looking at the interaction and two sort of 
contributory components to that, and that may be more helpful for interpreting what's going on. As usual, we'd like to make those choices and specification of which contrast, which effects we want to look at in advance as we pre-register our data analysis plan, and then when we analyse the effects we get, the effect size estimates and their confidence intervals, we can have reasonable confidence that we're minimising the risk of cherry-picking, and that's a good thing.